Om. Uh, namaste, welcome everyone to this year's um, Government Yoga Festival, beautifully by the side of Ganga. I'm realizing that actually this is the first time that I've walked this year along this path, and it's beautiful. I hope you're able to, to hear at the back. Uh, you can hear fine? Ah. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everybody. And uh, thanks to the organizers also of this yoga festival, Sri Amit, and uh, for actually, uh, this is a very nice way of uh, coming to Satsang with this um, structure being put up. This is new. This was not here last year when we were here. It was over another side here, so it, it's quite an uh, open feeling here. The view of Ganga, this is very, very nice. But we have not come here for that. <laughs> we may enjoy Srima Ganga and like this, but uh, I'm here only for today. And uh, I really, each time we are presented with the opportunity to sit together like this. For me, uh, my full heart is here. And with that being said also, uh, always the same opportunity to look together at uh, what I consider to be the most important subject for exploration in the human kingdom the whole topic of uh, self-realization. And uh, it, for a long time, this has seemed a very remote, far away topic. Uh, human beings now, we seem so uh, focused on information and uh, things which I regard as uh, perishable. And it is good that things are perishable, everything that exists on this side of the eyes are of time and change, transformation and perishable. This is fine. But uh, that we spend so much of our energy in pursuit of what is only momentary, transient, and overlook the greater opportunity of discovering the treasure of a human existence, for me is a little bit missing a great opportunity and point. So when I see mm, a number of beings gathered together like this, I regard it as another auspicious moment in our human story and life that we can come together and look into this subject of our own, the reality of our own self. And I hope you are not listening as though we are just having some lecture. I'm not having a lecture. I would invite that each one has the attitude that you are alone here with me and I'm having a chance to just to, to be with you and um, to look together if there is that urge in you. I would like to uh, present it in this way. Because sometimes people feel, oh, I would love to um, come to a satsang, but with all so many people, and I said, so what? So what if this was another uh, 10,000 people? Does it make your opportunity less relevant? I say, absolutely not, it does not. For the one who is earnest and in whose heart there is beating this pulse for awakening. Your time is now. And I don't want to feel remote from you because I'm up on some stage. This is only for practical reasons, so that everyone can see, see my form and I only also can see everyone. 
So only practical. There's nothing aboveness about it at all. Not from my way of looking, in a way. So can can we? Can I invite you to an opportunity for an hour or so to see what we can get out of this time together? Yes. One second. May I speak with you? Yes. Just a minute. Hello. Hello. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, Muji Baba, I have something to ask. A lot of time I feel that there's a war going on inside. A war is going on a inside, yes. Yeah. And I have to choose which side to go. And a lot of time I have felt that awakening part in myself. But, you know, with this thoughts coming in, certain time I drift away and then I get demotivated and I don't know how to, how to come back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So, actually, we must all know and I hope by talking like this, you'll become much more aware of this, that there are forces functioning within the human system there's an energy which is almost um, resisting anything that will cause you to awaken to yourself. There's an, a force that seems to um, uh, encourage you to remain only in the ego state. Okay? It goes for everybody, by the way. There's another energy which is more your transcendental energy, energy that will elevate the consciousness to higher and higher. So these two forces are present in you, okay? Before you came into a human body, hmm, the purest part of you is your timeless uh, being. And that came uh, in order to experience life. It arrives inside the body with the sense, I exist, this vibration, I am, or I exist. That I exist feeling that everyone has, yeah, uh, denotes I, consciousness, I'm here. That's what it means. I was not personal originally, and it still isn't personal. This vibration or intuition inside the body, I, means consciousness. I, consciousness, am here. No? But uh, it somehow causes uh, identification with the instrument uh, it, that it needs in order to taste experiencing of the diverse manifest world. So it got identified with the instrument and feel I am this. And also whatever conditioning arose with this body through parents, through environment, through friends, you know, also supported this belief, I am this body, I am this, uh, my, uh, mm, my sense of person, the belief that I am this person. That is the birth of person and ego. And the I am, which is consciousness, became I am this guy. I am this girl. I am this person. So that actually is a more, uh, I would say, distorted state of consciousness. So actually, you are the pure consciousness. But with this add-on, this identification with the body, and the belief I am the body, and whatever, <clears throat> whatever environment I grew up, contributed to the, the way I consider myself to be and who I consider myself to be. Okay? And that goes for everybody. Okay? But there must be something in you, and it is in everyone, it's a question of when it begins to show itself. 
because no one is going to be perfectly happy just with the body, mind, ego. In the body, mind, ego life, there will always be pleasure and pain, uh, success and failure, coming and going, up and down. That is, it's not a stable play of consciousness. And it is good that it is not stable, because if it was stable, you would not wake up to the, tru the greater truth of what you are. So because you are struggling inside, uh, these are the enzymes that are necessary to develop aspiration to go to higher stages of consciousness. The higher you go in consciousness, the more you're returning to your original nature. Your original nature is beyond suffering. It's beyond all these crazy things that we experience when we are ego identity. It's clear for you like this? So you're, the fact that you're experiencing a battle is a healthy thing, actually. It's not a pleasant thing, but it is a healthy thing because you're a living being who needs to find the greatest in yourself. So that which is not supporting the greatest joy, the greatest love, the greatest peace in you, hmm, you're at a stage where you're not wanting to go with the energy that is pulling you back into personhood because personhood is a more negative state once you start to develop an aspiration for freedom. That is what is happening for you. So I understand the need to go up in the conscious level and you be in that high stage, but the way, the path of going to that stage, to that level, is something I am seeking and I need your guidance then you come to satsang. Satsang is given to... Satsang, the term is maybe a Sanskrit or Hindu term, but anyone who is searching for truth is in satsang. It's beyond its uh, Hindu or Sanskrit limitation as a word. What it means is the urge to discover what is true. That is a satsang. And that urge will bring you into the right environment to support your discovery. So therefore, I would say, by all means, uh, come and sit in satsang in an environment. Now I've been here for the last three, uh, three and a half weeks sharing satsang. Those who came early, uh, some of them found, one person told me, the first week in satsang, it was very much struggling for me to understand what you were saying. It was such a struggle and I wanted to run away. I would just wanted to run away. But came the second week. And the second week, he said, young man, he said, the second week, I found that there was much more space in me and I could automatically understand what you're saying. And he said also, I am by nature a very shy person. So I'm usually not the one to stand up. But I found that I could verify what you're saying inside myself. And this young man is one of them who I said woke up. So in the beginning, there will be resistance because the carnal mind, the, the person mind, is fighting against the liberation in some way. Uh, Paramatman designed the cosmos like that, to function like that. So that the power that you have in you can blossom and elevate you into pure consciousness. If you have the urge, that must happen like that. If you have a strong identification with your body and personhood, then the urge to wake up will not show. You will just have to go through more trouble and more diverse uh, like this. Uh, and you will believe that is true until by grace something comes into your life and helps you to, to come more into a space of self-discovery. But there's never a time when uh, grace is not with you. You will come to discover that more and more. Once you begin and you have a taste a self-taste of what it is like in your true nature, that you begin to fall in love. 
with uh, the, the truth of your own being. That's what it is. Everyone who woke up, they fell in love. Not just with a person, they fell in love with the, the beauty of their true nature. And they could not stop. They just wanted to go all the way. Because so much peace, so much joy, so much love, so much wisdom, so much openness came for them. You see? So I would definitely encourage you, please come to satsang. I have a few more days. Please come sit with me. I would like to see you like there. Okay? And John, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. You come then. Thank you, Guruji. All my love. I don't know if this question is for this environment, but I'm leaving tomorrow and I don't want to miss the opportunity. Um, many times uh, I had questions and they were all answered by other people's questions. Yes. But there is in me this sentence you always repeat that when you first sat with Papa, n not first, but when you started your awakening, it was because you stood up in, in front of Papaji and asked your question. So that's why I'm, I'm here. Um, by your grace, by your pointings, um, I've, re I've seen my true self as in, in the immaterial a, a few times and all that goodness that came with it the bliss, the peace, all that has happened a few times and I thank you and Grace for it but it, it, so far it's always gone it, so it remained an experience when, just a minute. When you say you saw yourself in the material, what did it mean? In a, uh, immaterial, as as immaterial. Yes. Ah, not, immaterial. Not, Thank not, you. Not as a person. Yeah. Yes. Not uh, as a shape. Yeah. Not, not as, as a something shape. separate. Yeah. It was something very difficult to meet for to understand that what I was was something intangible. Ah. But the 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 example that you said about the hair the other day on Sunday, it helped. It was like. Okay, hair comes out of nothing. Why can I not come out fr from nothing? And then I saw myself as a puppet. I'm not, I'm not this. And when I looked up to see who is moving the strings, there was no, no one there. And I, I knew that I was that, not the puppet. And that puppet was moving the strings. And it was such a clear scene. And I was in peace and bliss and all that, and I, I was delighted. But then, after a couple of days, that bliss went, mm -hmm. and I it was unbearable because from being there to being in the person again, it's I, I I'm happier here. Is the bliss and the understanding the same thing? No, the understanding came and. After the understanding came, the bliss happened. Okay. The bliss, you say, went away. Did the understanding go away? No. The understanding is greater because bliss, maybe at for a while, some bliss arise and you, you something feels, oh, 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 oh this, is, uh, this is it. Oh, this is, whoa, I'm so happy. Whoa, I'm whoa, so, ah, so much bliss is there. And, uh, but it is also something perceivable also. The bliss is also perceivable, almost like a state of intense joy uh, appears. Uh, the understanding is the, the key that opened the door is there. The bliss factor may subside, but the understanding does not subside. The understanding is the greatest. The understanding says, you are that which cannot be seen with the physical eyes. It cannot be reached by the physical senses. It is not apart from you. Who are you for that uh, which is in fact infinite and without boundary? How can that be lost? Where? Where can the infinite hide? 
So the understanding opened that possibility that when that recognition happened somehow inside, all the false things disappeared. They could not stand the light of real seeing. So you that so the first thing happened is with them disappearing, bliss replaced the ignorance. But the understanding remains always. The understanding reveals what? You are not the form. You are not anything that comes or goes. You are not anything that come or go. You are the perceiver of all that comes and goes. Does not matter how beautiful or ugly they are. They only appear and disappear in you. If you were anything that appear in you, when it disappear, you would also have disappeared. But you are here to say, now that is gone. Who are you who is always here? The truth is always here. That is your true nature. That is always here. Understanding reveals this. But if uh, bliss is felt, maybe the sense of a person is there to say, oh, I, I love the bliss, I experience the yes, bliss. Yes, that's exactly yes. what happened. If the person has anything to do with it, because the person is shaped out of time and change, when the person change, the bliss will also go. If the bliss is owned by the person, the person is not consistent, so the bliss and the person will uh, go. The person will come back, bliss uh, absent and say, you know, I lost it, I lost it, and stuff. But the understanding says, this is all nonsense. Who is there to lose or to gain it? I am this. Don't be looking for a feeling. Sometimes we're thinking, yes, I have a checklist. You know, there should be bliss, there should be love, there should be wisdom, and something is like this. Not understandable, it is understandable. So what happens when bliss uh, uh, comes, ah, the bliss is here, some people say, I'm feeling so happy, but there's no, but there's no um, uh, wisdom. I'm missing the wisdom. I'm missing this. So the one who is saying that is itself not the true self. It is still the memory or the idea you have of who you are. This is what happened. And that will come and go. When you see that come and go, do not grieve, because that is not you. Whatever comes, goes. You will know that whatever comes, goes. That which witnesses coming and going does not go. That is the Self. That is the Truth. That you will discover to be your own Self. Like this. Yes, during those days in which I didn't feel a bliss, I could clearly see why I lost it. And it's because the feeling of, oh, I did it. I got it. Oh, yes. now I started projecting. Oh, when I go back home, everything will be different. So it's now this has become personal again. Yes. You follow? Yes. And then this becomes personal again. The one who gets it and loses, it's all personal. That's a personal story. It come and go, come and go. Oh, I lost it, but now I know what to do. This is personal. The pure seeing is not having this discussion. It remains always here. It is not making any claim such as, Oh, now I'm releasing my bliss. Now I'm releasing my joy. No, it uh, is here. And when you realize that it and the sense of yourself are one, just be with that, that's all. So at the moment, it's not shining as bliss. It's not shining as love. Don't worry. The most important is that you have found that which is constant to be yourself. Be in the constant, and gradually it will begin to reveal all its mysteries. All of these things will come. Don't worry about it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank I you. hope you got this point, because I, I, I see the earnestness in you, and I hope you see the mistake because right there, when you come to a moment of seeing, the sense of the person is almost is right there also, wanting to claim victory for the person. But the person is also just imagined. In the instant of seeing, the person does not really, uh, is not really 
important. Yeah, but what I um, also feel is like there is a part of persistence and urge, and there's another part of, of grace. Um, when I have had these scenes, it, by persistence, but also by grace, unexpectedly. It is the grace that allows and, and supports the persistence also. It's not separate. Grace is another name for the self also, in its function. Everything is there to support you. But what happens is that you have to transcend the cunningness of the psychological identity. This you will come to see. I am very happy to meet someone like you who have this earnestness, but it doesn't just... Sometimes after awakening, the mind comes back and someone is coming up and energy goes there. Because it's as though if, you, if I could give a character for the ego mind, this ego mind does not want you to wake up. Yes. doesn't want you to know who you are. Not to become who you are, who you are, but you are dreaming that you are something else that the mind can intimidate and play with. This you must overcome, you will outgrow that. Mm -hmm. For everyone it's the same. The, an energy is there that is holding you in personhood and you must transcend that. And you know what? You have all the power to do that. But sometimes some guidance is necessary to encourage you and then to feel your power again because sometimes we get hypnotized by our own projections and by, the, by personal identity and you're drifting off again, drifting off into some space. At one point you're going to realize that what you are cannot drift off. Only ideas can drift away. Yeah. Attention, even attention, which is one of your great powers, uh, can drift. You are not even your attention, also. Yeah. This you must come to know. Uh, amazingly, what I'm sharing at one time in the human history was much more a common thing. Pe more people understood uh, their true nature. Not globally, but in er some areas uh, it was much more cultivated that this, these discussions were happening and people were awakening to the naturalness of being. And uh, those who woke up to the truth of themselves, they were like magnets. And for those who were searching, and they would come, and there would be a great respect for people who are awake to their full potential as awakening. Now it is not so... I don't know what to say about it. So when I see someone come, and I, I, I feel that, you know, something is about to hatch, to hatch, uh, uh, like uh, there's a chick inside the egg and it wants to hatch, then I very much want to protect this uh, situation, that it, uh, that it lives and flourishes in that um, awakening, you see? Mm -hmm. So, my question uh, now is, when... Um, how could you put it? I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the persistence, uh, and, 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 but also, I, I, I don't know if I can ask this, but I ask for, for your grace also to help me with this. I know, I think grace is necessary also, or not. Maybe it's just an idea. The seeing has already taken place in you. What you see, and what you saw, is that there is something here which is not moving about. Because this is here, everything that's moving about you can see. Because actually there is something here that does not move about. It's not waiting to become enlightened. It is in fact the Source itself. It is not an object. You may call it the perfect state, if you want to say. I prefer to call it the stateless state. It's pure. The only thing about you that is perfectly perfect always. Nobody can perfect it. 
Nobody can help it. The, even the somebodiness that you believe you are itself is not stable. You are only mm, wearing this costume of personhood for a while. Hopefully, that you will awaken to the truth of who you are. And when you awaken, you will see it is here right now. It's already been here. You did not create it. I'm wondering if before you sit down, uh, whether we can uh, come to that clarity again. Something yeah. is saying, please help me to, you know, to be persistent enough. But even that one who is saying, please help me to, to stay with this, is itself perceived in this. Even this sense of yourself saying, please help me to be persistent enough to stay with this, this voice which you believe so much is also just imagination appearing in you, which is already pure. But something is resisting to see this. You are this already. This, what you are speaking for help, is to become something. But you are that which doesn't become. It just is. Yes. But because of habit of associating this with, you know, someone who is changing and growing, which is also a way that consciousness manifests also. But here, I am pulling you to be very direct. And if you are direct enough and present with me, you see, you go right through everything. Because the self that you are waiting to wake up to in another few weeks, another few whatever it is, is here right now perfect. In fact, it's the only thing in the entire universe that is always the same. Beautifully the same. It is not seen because uh, the feeling of you as a person uh, is very strong for consciousness. Consciousness is strongly identified with being a person. And this person has trouble and wants to get out of trouble and has heard that I can get out of trouble for all time and is trying to get to this. So there is a little something there that has to happen. That the seeing and the doubt, the doubt also drops away and the seeing is, uh, is perfected somehow. This is it. Thank you. Thank you for allow, helping me to see what I saw. Okay, Thank you. okay. It will continue. Awesome. I'll take another one. You, know. you want to say? You, you come. Nam Muji Baba. Uh, I am attending your satsang for the last three years uh -huh. and you have totally changed my life. I know I am not this body, I am not mind, I am not senses, I am not ego, I am Shiva, the immortal truth, I am consciousness, eternal place. But Baba, when I sit for meditation, when I empty myself as per your invitation, so I totally empty myself. But at that time, some sort of feelings, my, my neck goes like this, and I have got stiffness here, and starting pain here, this and that. I cannot sit more than 15 to 20 minutes. So that is the problem. Some reaction energetically is happening. There is a, an energy that is directly resistant to awakening. It comes from the mind and it can take these shapes to distract you or to put you off your final seeing, actually. It happens. That you are coming now, you feel you empty yourself, huh? but uh, the self is always empty. The self is already empty. Always empty. That yes. Is right. yes, yes. Because so it's just a recognition now of your already emptiness. You're not going to add anything to or take anything away from that perfect state. 
But the only thing is, when so I sit for that, totally empty myself and sit for meditation, no. at that time my neck goes like this, I have got stiffness in my neck, my yes. shoulders, and it's very difficult at that yes. time. Yes, why it's difficult is not just the pain, what happens is the attention is going there towards these manifestations and say, no, I can't concentrate. It's as though something, it's as though you're looking for something and you're getting close to it and your mind starts to throw stones in the bush. So you start, ah, oh, you're coming right here, you're going to, are you going to go there and say, oh, whoa, what's that? And you're, oh, you start to look over there, oh, another one, oh, you look over there, to distract you from this. But this that you're searching for is no distance from you. Your recognition is not at a distance from you. It's just what happens is that that which has been experienced as a distraction, the thoughts coming up, the things coming up, and your attention wants to go to them to distract you from that which you naturally are, that power can create these type of changes in you. It can create uh, this kind of pain in the back. Sometimes I'm um, in uh, satsang, and I'm going to make a guided meditation. I come on the stage, I sit down. As I sit down, it says, okay, namaste. Um, uh, just sit comfortably. Just be aware of yourself. I see people going. <laughs> what is that? I'm not an hypnotist. What is that? The mind itself is trying to avoid the contemplation that will expose that the mind, you are beyond the mind. And it happens like that. It happens like that. There are people who go to bed in the night, they can't sleep, even with sleeping tablets, but they come to satsang. <laughs> like this. What is that? That's an avoidance that is coming uh, as a reaction uh, from the egoic identity. It happened like that. It happened like that. So it when can even cause, as you're about to see something also, you get stomach ache and you have to go leave the room. Even here, I'm sitting here, and some people get up, they're leaving. Why? You can make the greatest discovery, they're getting up, what, to go and buy ice cream or to go and look at Ganga, and then the mind is laughing at you. You're a fool, you've missed your chance. Because the mind is too strong. It he starts to give you a headache even. So if your head is hurting and you say, I can't sit, then lie down, then lie down, lie down and still continue with your looking. You say, okay, even if I don't, it doesn't, it's not going to stop me from looking. Even if I sneeze and my head fall off, I'm not going to give up. But some people, ah, oh, sorry, oh, oh, so I got to come out, I got to come out. You must be suspicious of your mind also. This is, the, this is the incredible thing. In fact, why they say we are seven and a half billion human beings on the earth? How many are awake? Why so few? Why? Because it's almost as though we are imprisoned in our own mind. You cannot feel your natural attraction towards the God energy in you. Just a, a, a carnal mindedness thinking only about perishable things, stupid things, but to awaken to, you are the greatest treasure in the world for you to find, what you are. That's not ego. To discover what is the treasure of a human life, to discover that, I put nothing above that. A human being who wakes up to the truth of what they are, who is loving and kind and open and wise and peaceful and happy. What is above that? Greed, selfishness, fear, desire? These are lowly, uh, lowly, and not, they're not reached the stage of virtues yet. And yet, we are so fully in possession of these lower tendencies. But your higher power, of love and peace and justice and wisdom and care and compassion and openness and fearlessness. This, uh, we speak, people are walking out, uh, 
they're going to get out. Ice cream, cigarettes. That's, this shows actually how much uh, uh, we are held by ignorance of the Self. But there was never an age when there were not awakened beings on this planet, and there is never an age where there are not <clears throat> people who are destined to wake up. Our goals have changed uh, from the pure uh, discovery of the truth of the human expression of consciousness. We have shifted from such high standing hmm, to lowly things, selfish, full of judgment, full of stupid things. And there are many people who are waiting to destroy your mind. And we give energy to them and don't realize who lives here. God is here. Truth is here. And we are cooperating with our own betrayal by dark forces in this world. And yet, in you is the perfect state, undiscovered. This is what I speak. There is no reason for these energies to stop you from going through. Ready to. to wake up to the truth of who you are. And you will do it. It will happen. Thank you. By, the, by your grace, definitely it will happen. Yes. Thank you, Muji. Yes. I love you. Love you too. Thank it's you. not that the Self is going to become the Self. But whatever it is, that is uh, somehow, like I say, I can put my fingernail and hide the sun. Something is uh, seemingly uh, creating some delusion in you, but it will soon be gone if you persist. You don't persist. I had my own energy with you to do it. You, you wake up from this. The light of one awakened being in this world is enough uh, to light countries with light. And everyone has this potential, has this power. Everyone is this truth, unrecognized as yet. In this life, this life should be for freedom. Freedom means to wake up to the truth of who you are. And there is not one person here who fundamentally and essentially is not the truth. There is not one here. But is there one here who will wake up to the realization of that truth? That is my point. Yeah. Okay. Let it be known, let it be said, that these words that are shared with you has happened in this place, and it came for you. That it came for you, for your heart to verify. But maybe it's a question of time and timing. In Paramatman's timing, maybe it will come. But I am also here in Paramatman's timing. So, I will leave with this blessing that for each one in whose heart is a yearning for the realization of the truth of what you are essentially, may your highest wish be fulfilled. Yes. May your deepest longing to wake up out of this deep sleep and nightmare of egoic identity and wake up to the living truth, the imperishable truth, 
may that come to be uh, for you so much so that anyone who meets you on this path called life will be somehow inspired by your presence by your lightness by openness by your joy and wisdom and love and compassion that they will be so touched and inspired by that that somehow they will be compelled to search within themselves to find that which they see evident in you and wake up because if you are on this planet unawake you are missing your life in the highest sense I say this today with you with force and courage also because we are living we are dreaming our life you must be alive to what you are and by the grace of God by the grace of Lord Shiva by the grace of truth because it has not pushed you away but we must wake up so who feels these words inside them thank you thank you thank you thank you then let it be known keep your hand up let it be known in you that this that i speak is the truth of your heart that you will be free human beings in our time in this this is said to be the age of kali yuga which means a difficult age for humanity but you will flower into awakening this is my blessing for you thank you yes thank you very great very great it is easy to sleep in this world but you become the seeds of awakening in this sleeping world our attention has become so externalized that we are cherishing perishable things nothing is wrong with things the paramatma made all this nothing is wrong with things but when you give so much importance over perishable things for perishable things and miss your imperishable nature something is not right so i come to call you home a journey without distance to have a human body is already a great gift because with a human body consciousness can at least begin to contemplate its own nature if you are a donkey maybe you cannot you don't see donkeys in satsang i don't know but you are a human being it means you have the capacity you have the power you have the grace to wake up to this no one as life has not written you off you are the same as i am you are the same as every awakened being who has come to tell you uh, you are this wake up from that sleep transcend transcend the pull of the senses to keep you earthbound
to whom do I speak? To that principle in you that is life itself. We are not here to survive. You are here to bear witness to the glory of God, to the power of consciousness. As a free being, to be liberated from the grip of egoic darkness, imagined limitation, from fear, from selfishness. That which is in you is greater than everything that is manifest as perishable. That which you are is greater than this body. Bless that you wake up not just to a mental appreciation of this, but to an experiential discovery of this. Let it be so. Thank you. I pray that you will not become a servant of dark things, but the embodiment of truth. Have this feeling inside, I am born for this. This life is for freedom. Thank you, thank you. I would just like to thank again the organizers of this festival, uh, Amit and uh, what is the na lady's name? I just was briefly told, but uh, they organized and uh, prepared this all this space so that we could just walk in here and sit down and share these things. Where are they? Are they here? Uh,
Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. And once again, I would like to thank the organizers of this yoga festival here uh, for really uh, putting so much beautiful effort to create a space like this for beings to come and to explore a little bit into the nature of consciousness and other expressions also of uh, yoga and uh, self-discovering. Thank you. I don't know them. Ah, is that Mr. Amit there? Yes. And, uh, yes. yes. They can come and say. Requesting Mr. Amit and Nina Ji to kindly join us on the stage, yeah. the organizers of the event. And uh, we are uh, deeply honored and humbled by your benign presence today, Baba Ji, here with us. Also, uh, we have uh, the MD of uh, GMVN. Yes. Karwal Mandal Vikas Nigam, uh, Eva Srivastav ah. present here with us as a souvenir, mm -hmm. presenting a momentum. <laughs> Acknowledging uh, Babaji's <laughs> benign and divine presence today. How deeply humbled and honored we are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is? This is? Tulsi. Oh, Tulsi, huh? Thank you.